While it's here, the OnePlus 5. Guys, I'd like to take a look at OnePlus's newest offering and compare it to the iPhone 7 Plus speed-wise. Now these are in a completely different bracket price-wise, but still, OnePlus has always been pretty capable for the money. Now this phone, where to begin? The controversy surrounding it is insane in the news. I haven't seen anything like it since antenna gates with the iPhone 5. You know, despite the fact that the design seems copied, that the benchmarks are inflated, the camera flaws, the antenna design, flaw and more, I would still like to compare the speed of these devices. Now ignoring the fact that OnePlus is being accused of manipulating benchmarks by a Google engineer, it's actually a very powerful device. So let's go ahead and start out with a real life test. Basically doing things you'd be doing on a day to day basis. Now we're going to go ahead and start the timer and jump into Snapchat here. Go ahead and load a snap, go back, go to Instagram, watch it load, go to the camera, take a picture and jump into Google Maps to navigate. Now we want to edit a picture with Photoshop Express. This is an eight K image, very heavy, and this is where the OnePlus 5 falls behind as loading from the internal storage takes a minute here, but exporting it uh, shortly after. The iPhone, meanwhile, is already in Minecraft, loading a pre-saved world, and then jumping into Super Mario Run, it's already onto there. But the OnePlus 5 isn't far behind at this point. So just a few seconds behind, the iPhone 7 Plus now is in Asphalt 8, a pretty big application with some web elements in it. Finish that one onto Grand Theft Auto San Andreas here. The OnePlus 5 at this point in time is certainly not as far behind as the Galaxy S8 was during the test, still doing quite well, even though it's a few applications behind, and those are usually the larger applications where it's slowing down. iPhone finished Netflix onto Uber, hailing a cab, or an Uber must I say, it's already in Amazon and SoundCloud, so it's really, really firing through those last applications, writing a review with Yelp and uh, Video Shop. So this is the most intensive part of this test. We're basically gonna be loading the same 30 second 4K clip uh, originally recorded on the OnePlus. So it's compiling on the iPhone and this is where the OnePlus 5 finally joins it and uh, does the same thing. Now, already saving that video on the iPhone, skip through a little bit so you guys wouldn't have to sit through it and finished with a score of one minute and 43 seconds. Now it's going on to the second round where we check the memory optimization. With the iPhone's paltry three gigabytes of RAM, it still manages to have all of the applications be exactly where they were left. So you're able to jump into them and start using them right away. You don't have to reload anything. The OnePlus 5 still loading and now just exporting that video. So memory management on the iPhone has always been good and this is no exception, does very well, finishes with a score of two minutes and 10 seconds. Meanwhile, the OnePlus 5 still loading and going through round two now. So lapping that one, that's a little behind and jumping into the applications, you can see they're all still preloaded. The eight gigabytes of RAM, really, really doing wonders here. Uh, when we did this test originally with the Galaxy S8, all of the applications reloaded. I don't know why memory management was just poor, but very, very good here on the OnePlus 5. So although you only get five gigabytes accessible RAM on the OnePlus 5, it's still helping out here as can be seen. So wrapping this test up, all in all, the OnePlus 5 was only a minute behind. All right, so let's go ahead and do a startup test. Just completed all of these. All of the apps are still running in the background on these devices. Not sure if that would impact anything, but just wanna see in a rough startup test, which one is going to be faster. You know, the OnePlus is really surprising me with its capability here. It's very quick. Uh, the developers kind of know that people don't like long drawn out animations and they certainly shorten them throughout to the Oxygen OS on uh, the OnePlus 5. So with both of these off, um, let's go ahead and jump in. And uh, one, two, three. So powering them on at the exact same time. Here we go, uh, OnePlus powered by Android. This just got its first software update today. Uh, Oxygen OS update, not uh, Android, but it's running 7.1.1 versus 10.3.2, which is gonna be replaced by 10.3.3 here shortly. But wow, that was incredibly fast. Um, holy crap, that's really, really fast. This one definitely takes longer to boot up, 
but not terrible, I'd say. So iPhone uh, 7 Plus wins this one. All right, so let's go ahead and get a little bit more specific here. And I want to compare the uh, times to launch applications. You know, we did compare them, but that was an overall altogether type of test. I want to see individually which one loads faster here. So God, I love that clear all button on the OnePlus 5. Anyways, Snapchat, one, two, three. I love how it loads almost instantly on the OnePlus 5, like there's no animation and it doesn't hang. Definitely uh, loading faster on the OnePlus 5 here when synchronized. One, two, three. Uh, this one's about even. Google Maps, one, two, three. iPhone 7 Plus did this one. Photoshop, OnePlus 5 did that one just a little bit faster. And Minecraft loaded faster on the OnePlus 5. That's great. Mario Run. All right, um, loading faster on this guy as well. So the Galaxy S8 had a huge difference from the iPhone when I test them in the speed test. And it's quite interesting to see an Android device that's actually faster than the 7 Plus in some areas. The S8 was quite slow in most, uh, but surprisingly getting some good results here. It's either evenly matched or faster in most areas. So the San Andreas application, pretty heavy. Uh, let's try actually loading it though. So I just got to the splash screen, but one, two, three. Wow, already halfway done, pretty much done on the seven or the OnePlus 5 here. That's amazing. Overall, as you guys can see, some great advantages to the OnePlus 5 in terms of speed. All right, let's go ahead and load up some web pages using the default browsers here. All right, one, two, three. Wow, OnePlus is uh, a little bit ahead here too. Let's try CNN, all right, in three, two, one. And these are mobile web uh, versions. Oh, actually quite even here. The iPhone show the content a little bit faster. Let's try apple.com in three, two, one. Oh, of course, the iPhone has to uh, load that one faster. Let's try OnePlus's website, three, two, one. And yeah, of course, this one has to load its native web page a little bit faster than the iPhone. So very fair, very uh, comparable performance in the browsers even. So now that we got a good idea of how they compare, I wanted to get some numbers here with some benchmark applications, but I just want you guys to understand that the uh, OnePlus, it feels amazing, where the iPhone kind of has sort of a little bit of a lag here in between, some stutter once in a while. iOS 11 definitely improves upon that, I think but this guy just feels liquid fast. Like you can just jump through menus really fast, get into apps, leave them almost instantly. And I really like that fluidity in the Oxygen OS. All right, so let's jump into Geekbench here, see what kind of scores we can get. Of course, the iPhone rubs it in by finishing early, but we got a very admirable score here. So. Now I wanted to address the uh, elephant in the room, you can say, with OnePlus is cheating on the benchmarks. What I'm showing you here, according to a Google engineer, isn't what the OnePlus 5's actual scores are. So this is an inflated version. Basically, it runs at 100% throughout the duration of the test uh, in very basic terms. So this isn't the real score here. But still, you know, that aside, um, that's very unfair of them to do in the first place. I got to say it's not very respectable, but this thing does perform well. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM. It's got some of the highest clock speeds that we've seen from an 835 in a phone shipping today. Um, so, you know, regardless of what this says, you know, the performance speaks for itself from the earlier tests. It is very, very capable. And I would say faster than the S8. Holy crap. The multi-core score is 6653. So definitely outdoes the iPhone in the multi-core and the single very, very weak, even with an inflated benchmark. So anyways, guys, there it is. Geekbench. Let's go ahead and get an Antutu so we get some uh, GPU benchmarks in here as well. All right, as it's wrapping it up here, just wanted to say they both have the same resolution display, so 1920 by 1080. Quite the impressive score. And to boot, you get an OLED panel, which of course is the same mostly as the OnePlus 3T, which there were some complaints about, but while using it, I've noticed that it is brighter in the same brightness settings mostly i really really like it all right so what's left i wanted to test the fingerprint sensor speeds both with screen on and screen off now this is gen 2 on the iphone 7 plus they've had this fingerprint sensor for a few years too so they definitely had time to improve it all right so three two one wow at least two times as fast three two one 
That's crazy. So it's entirely the animation. If Apple were to remove that animation, it wouldn't look as good aesthetically, but functionally you'd get to your content faster. And I feel like that would save you so much time throughout the day as you're always unlocking your phone. That's crazy. Wow. So let's try it with screen on in three, two, one. Yeah. So that one has a little bit more of an animation. It's not quite as drawn out as the iPhones. Uh, still, I'd say almost two times as fast. So guys, there it is. Just wanted to say thank you for watching this speed test. This phone has a ton of controversy, yes. Some negatives, yes. But it's not without its good points as well. So I just wanted to say thanks to OnePlus for sending me uh, review units. I do appreciate that. Overall, great phone. The price point is just getting more expensive. It's still a couple hundred dollars behind the iPhone 7 Plus, but I would say a fantastic bargain. It keeps up to the iPhone 7 Plus, even surpasses it in some tests. It can do almost everything that it can do and even more now with the dual lens camera and portrait mode and everything like that So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the test. Peace